Friends, today is uh, Tuesday, September 21, and we are in a series where we're looking at the wonderful story Jesus tells in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, uh, concerning the figure who's often called the Good Samaritan. Uh, Jesus had as one of his ministry aims to deconstruct, or recast, reimagine the basic character of the spiritual life, what it means to have a relationship with God. And he wanted to move it away from a system where God gave you a whole set of rules that you could do, you fulfill those obligations, you made ritually pure, ethically sound, and then you, you are given at the end of uh, your life uh, the gift of eternal felicity. Think about that for a moment. Um, you know, that's a little bit like I obey my teacher and I'm nice in class and I'm polite and I raise my hand when I want to ask a question and I'm, I'm kind to the other students. And as a result, my teacher gives me the gift of um, a perpetual income for the rest of my life and a free house. It would be a little bit disproportionate, right? So if I obey this set of rules and I take care of my end, then God owes me eternal felicity, <laughs> the perfect and blessed life for the entire span of time that goes on and on into infinity. It's a little bit disproportionate, right? There's something wrong with the calculation. Jesus is, is deconstructing this way of understanding the great commandments. And to begin with, he's deconstructing the fact that you, you see, I have a set of obligations to God first, they take priority, and then a set of obligations to others. That implies that there's that love of neighbor is subordinate to love of God, and that there's a sequential and subordinate relationship. In Jesus' view, these things are intertwined, they're interconnected, they are mutually defining. And that's because the God that we want to honor is a God who cares about the broken and the hurting. And so caring for our neighbor is actually a way of honoring God and fulfilling the first part of the commandment. These two commandments are, are, are mutually, um, only can be mutually understood. In fact, we encounter God when we're dealing with when we're, when, we're, when we're obeying the, the command to love neighbor, when moving into situations of difficult division, we find God is already present, revealing himself. He's already at work. And that's why Jesus consistently tried to shock his contemporaries, who always put the commandments for their ritual purity first. They didn't eat with someone who might be hungry and share their meal with them because they were a Gentile and make them impure. And then they would have to go through a set of rituals and they couldn't fulfill their worship obligations. And Jesus says to them, quoting the prophets, moving out of the first five books of the Bible into the prophetic literature, and he says, Hosea says in 6.6, 6, I desire mercy more than I do sacrifice. I'm not so worried about your ritual purity and doing all of these ceremonies the right way. I want to see how it is you're dealing with your neighbor and their need. Because all of those ways you're extending my love and goodness and grace into the world are a form of worship. He breaks down the distinction. Uh, God is, is drawing through Christ us away from this neat system of rules and obligations into this broad world where he is active. In the language of Jesus, he is bringing the kingdom. And he does it through the relationships he's forming between his followers and his disciples and the people in the world in their various kinds of need, their need for truth, their need for love, their need for mercy and forgiveness. As he forms those relationships, he is actually building the kingdom. And this is a calling that requires humility and faith and dependence, not a sense, I can manage this. Let's take a moment and pray. We want to honor God by reaching out into the world and blessing neighbors in all kinds of ways. We want that holy adventure. We want to see the kingdom come through those relationships, Lord. But we're also scared. There is a lawyer in us that wants a safer route, that wants to manage our own religious life, reduce our obligations, do the minimum, play safe, be secure, and not take risks. So we hope you will build up in us a resistance to that tendency we all have to be that lawyer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.